uh, we were eager to, to, to announce the release date because we, we knew about it for, for some time now and fans asking for it and everything and just like releasing the game towards the end of the summer like that to it's kind of you'll need your, your, your school books and stuff and you'll need your Deus Ex copy. <laughs> These guys. We never really set an uh, official date before what we just did, uh, but we thought, uh, like six months ago, we thought we might be able to launch it in the, the first quarter of 2011, and at some point we said, okay, uh, with the bugs, that the base was uh, quite filled and everything, and we, now if we want to, to ship something that is finished, a Polish product, we need to take uh, a little bit more time. I was able to play it from start to finish uh, before Christmas, like in October or November. I played it for the first time from start to finish. So, and now, uh, I mean, we still have some crashes that we need to get rid of, but the game, all the content is there and uh, you can play the entire game. In terms of what we're releasing, I think, no, I think uh, so far what we did, we, we really started with a strategy of like uh, getting people to understand the world, the characters and everything. And as we move closer to the release date, now we'll dig a little bit more into the conspiracy, more into actual, uh, at some point eventually, gameplay footage and, and, and things like that. And actually, this week at, at PAX, we're, we're showing some, some of the, the real code uh, to, to, to the fans for the first time, like that it's not uh, only for journalists uh, and everything. So as we move closer, we'll, we'll release more. And I think, it, 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 to me, it, it, gets, it, it, it gets where it needs to, to go. And the, the feedback we received so far, as what people have seen, has been tremendously positive. So. And th there were several reasons. Uh, we wanted to reboot the franchise. For us, it was kind of a new beginning. Uh, we were seeing it, looking at it more like a new IP type of thing. And, and when you look at the old games, like the endings are pretty, uh, pretty dark and pretty like hopeless. And we thought like maybe it could be interesting to go back in time also because now we, we bring a new story, we bring new characters. Uh, also the fact that in the timeline with all the mechanical augmentations that came before the nanotechnology and, and things like that, we thought it, it, it'd be really nice to explore that, uh, that, uh, that era of time in the franchise and everything. And since the augmentations, we wanted to, to push them to, to make them more like kind of star of the show type of thing. Uh, we thought with mechanical augmentations, since they're more visible, we could do more crazy stuff and interesting stuff and also from a theme standpoint like seeing the augmentations since transhumanism is one of the big themes of the game then it sticks in your brain you see it like there's something uncanny about it that makes you think about those things and those are many of the reasons why we went uh, with a game 25 years before the first one I don't see it as, an, as a revenge as much as I see it as trying to uncover the truth and make sure that Adam Jensen, like at the beginning of the game, is 100% human and at some point uh, there's the, uh, uh, an incident where he gets badly injured and now he is forced to get augmented to save his life but also to David Sarif his boss take advantage of, okay, now I can build a war machine with him or something. And, and for for uh, for us, like we saw it more like okay, he comes he comes back from the dead, and uh, he just wants to uncover the truth. That happened to him. He didn't choose that, and he's going to fight to make sure that things like that don't happen again. We have attempted to kind of do the HD remakes one or two to kind of real like intensify the kind of hype and to build again. I mean. Uh, it, it's you discuss about a lot of things during the production, uh, but for us, like uh, it, it's not necessarily important that people have played the old games because this one is kind of a standalone game. Like uh, you'll dig, it, you'll get into that world, and you'll learn to discover it. Uh, there are ties in tie-ins tie with the, the the original game, but those things are made in a way that it's going to speak to the old fans but if you're a new fan you won't have the feeling oh i'm missing something here type of thing so i think you don't need to 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 have the uh, uh to know the old games to appreciate this one after that if someday there are there's something that we do about it it'd be great but like we didn't feel that it was something that was necessary 
for me, Invisible War, it's not a bad game at all. I, I think it actually it's a very solid game. Uh, it might not have been what people expected from a DSX game, but if you look at it as a standalone game and forget about the first game and you look at it on its own, it's not, it's not bad at all. And uh, when I played it and everything, I thought in terms of the, uh, how they support the multi-solution, the multi-path and all those kind of things in the levels, I think they did a better job at staying consistent throughout the game as opposed in DSX1. It's very open in the first, I would say, uh, tier of the game and maybe half, and then it, it starts to be very, very linear, and even you don't have multipath anymore that much, and it, 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 it becomes like a shooter type of thing. So I think the second one has been more consistent in that respect. Head for the elevator. It'll take you directly to the penthouse. Oh, our inspiration was all over the place. Of, of course, we went to some of the classics like Blade Runner. We went to things like Ghost in the Shell, but we also went back to things like Robocop, even Johnny Mnemonic, even it was not that good. There were some cool ideas in that. Uh, we, we also went to things like Salty Ray, which is a Japanese anime that not many people know. Um, we, we also read some books about transhumanism, like uh, and uh, like Ray Kurzweil uh, work and, and things like that. We also watch a lot of documentaries to to see the the, the, the state of the world and where things are going and, and and things like that. So our sources of inspiration have been all over the place. Like we didn't just uh, stick to cyberpunk uh, material or, or whatnot. We really went. Uh, as broad as possible to, to, to make sure that we're not missing any opportunities or things like that. They're about to get you. Get to the hangar bay. Yeah. Yeah. It seems to be like an incredible amount of attention to detail. Yes. And just things like the newspapers you can read, the yep. stuff hidden in the drawers. Yes. I mean, how much time did you kind of invest in that and how important was that? Uh, the time we invest in that, I didn't really count it because we spent tremendous time like trying to figure out all those things and how they would work together and everything and how it would expand on the world. Um, you don't need a, to, to pay attention to them. I think there are, those things are there for experienced seekers. The people who really enjoy the, 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 uh, the, 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 the story and get immersed in the world and they want to know more and they want to expand, they want to know uh, all the little things, I think they're going to have quite a lot to, to discover, but if you're more the type of player that goes from A to B to just, okay, I want to go to the next plot point and get a, over with my mission, you will miss stuff, but since you're more uh, the type going A to B, you won't care about that, and therefore you're not penalized yeah. and, and whatnot. So it's not penalizing, it's more uh, rewarding if you do it, and if you don't, you don't.